Hey everyone, it's Daniel here from InfraVest. Just want to do a quick video on talking about a pretty interesting concept uh, that came out from Michael Burry about the bullwhip effect. Now, what is the bullwhip effect? Now, the bullwhip effect is basically a scenario where you get consumers coming in and basically placing in certain orders that the retails didn't expect right the retail shops the grocery stores etc etc right they're, they're coming in and they're basically um, seeing a lot of consumers purchasing products that they generally wouldn't think that they would order a lot of but you'll see a lot of consumers coming in if let's say generally they would sell a certain item for 30 uh, they would usually sell in a day 30 items of it but instead consumers start to demand about 60 or 80 items of this particular brand and it creates an effect where consumers start coming in because they believe maybe they need excess inventory maybe they need more of something because they believe that you know there might be a shortage in the future or or there might be a high demand of it because of the amount of money or stimulus that came into the markets so the consumers will come in make a judgment based on that purchase a lot of goods that you see from uh, the uh, from the retailers and then the retailers will basically get a shock where they will say okay um, consumers are now demanding more of this product I need to go out to the manufacturers and start ordering more of this product so the retailers will go out and they'll start ordering a lot of more of, of, of this particular item and this product they'll order way more in inventory if they usually order let's say for example 80 they might decide that they'll order maybe who knows 160 of these items so they'll go to the manufacturer the manufacturer will be shocked be like oh my gosh you know the retailers are now coming out ordering more items than they usually do now we need to also order more from our suppliers and order maybe let's say 200 300 items more than usual so this creates a bullwhip effect where the concept is you know it's a it's a bull whip where you where, where you take a whip and you're <laughs> kind of whipping um uh, this 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 whip or this rod or whatever it is uh, you're taking this whip and, and you're whipping it which is creating these up and down kind of cycles where uh, consumers come in right consumers come in and they they purchase a lot of goods which then affects the retailers and they come and start ordering more uh, goods from the manufacturers and then the manufacturers seeing that okay retailers are demanding more so let's order more from our suppliers and the suppliers are going out and they're producing more because they need to fill the demand that's coming from the manufacturers and that's also coming from the retailers and that's also coming from the consumers and what eventually happens is this bullwhip bull whip effect will create a scenario where eventually what we're seeing today with higher interest rates the same consumers that that came in to buy a lot of goods when there was a shortage of supply and there was a lot of money that was printed in the economy in terms of monetary uh, policy what will eventually happen is those same consumers will end up not purchasing the same amount that they did previously right and those same consumers when they go back to the retail shops the retailers will see that I got all this inventory brought them here to you and you don't want more right and then it's an effect right this bullwhip effect what it happens is is the cycle then repeats where where now the retailers realize that okay they've got excess inventory that's sitting here Right? The manufacturers realize they also have excess inventory. The suppliers realize they've got excess inventory. So production continues to increase while the demand on the cycle from the, from the consumers to the retailers to the manufacturers are starting to go down because, hey, no one's buying. They got an excess inventory on the shelf. Demand has dropped because the, the Fed or the central bank is increasing interest rates. And now you've got demand coming down. And you've got this bullwhip effect, which then leads to not only a shortage of inventory and massive demand, which which then retailers and suppliers go out to order a lot of. But now you have the after effects of it, where basically you're now having these retailers 
like we have seen with Target and Walmart and a lot of these retailers have posted uh, previously and talked about it um, in their earnings that um, they came out and they announced that, you know, they expect that their inventory in their shelves, their inventory levels to be quite elevated. So what do you do there in that scenario? You've you've purchased so much, you you've ordered so much, it's sitting there, it's doing nothing. Demand is coming off, right? What do the entrepreneurs do? What do the businesses do? Right? Especially if the Fed is tightening tightening and increasing interest rates. They basically start to bring down the prices, right? Because they've got inventory. They don't know what to do. So the retailers start bringing down the prices so that they can start selling to the consumers. The manufacturers start bringing down the prices so they can sell it to the retailers. The suppliers start bringing down the prices so they can give it to the and sell it to the manufacturers so that they can get these uh, goods off their um, off their shelves, right? Holding it and keeping it there um, could be one strategy for some some retailers, but may not be the best strategy because it's going to be a cost for them, right? They can put other items that might be in demand rather than having those items sit there and, and just be a, a cost for them. So either one thing is they can try to shove this inventory in in the back of the uh, warehouse and keep it there and, and pay for the cost of, of holding that inventory there or get rid of it, sell it on discount and so that you can bring in new fresh inventory and new fresh items. And especially with food, you can't really do that with food. You can freeze food, I understand that, but it's not, in my opinion, the best thing to... Um, to go about handling the situation, right? So I, I think what I what I perceive is that with this bull bull um, bull whip effect, you're gonna see that now prices are gonna start to drop, and that's what Michael Burry said in one of his tweets: is that this bull whip effect, you're seeing that okay, initially you had a lot of people increase the inventory, which caused prices to go up. Now he's betting with this bull whip effect that prices to come down in the future as there's an increase in inventory increase in supply which is definitely something that i see coming down um in the in the future so probably you might see in the summer months where where a lot of retailers or a lot of businesses may think that okay you know these are the months where a lot of um people will be doing bond where we'll be purchasing a lot of products and we can get off get a lot of inventory off our our shelves but in in this specific scenario where we are with high inflation and the CPI at about year over year um, is about uh, in the U.S. about 8.6 percent and in Canada is about 7.7 percent. Right. With a high CPI inflation number like that, bringing demand lower also as interest rates increase, eventually that should reverse as there's so much inventory and supply that they need to get this off their shelves. Right. They need to get this off their shelves, which might hint towards future inflation reports, CPI reports um, or expectation of consumers, um, consumer inflation um, is expected to maybe come down in the coming months based on this bull whip effect uh, cycle. Right. And then, you know, it'll, it'll be to add on something else. It'll, I'm be, I'll be very curious to see how this bullwhip effect will happen and occur, especially when you get high inventory levels. And if we start to get into a recession that may lead towards the Fed going again and printing money and cutting rates, stimulating the markets again, will we get a cycle where prices go up, come down, then shoot up again later at the end of the year or or next year as stimulus comes in from from the Fed, especially if now now I'm saying if we get into a recession, if the economy breaks, if there's high uh, jobs unemployed, high job losses or high unemployment, then yes, you can expect the Fed to come and try to save the day by cutting rates and pumping money. And if that does that, if 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 that happens and the Fed does that, then you might see, you know, prices 
continue to increase again, which is why you might hear a lot of people argue that inflation might be elevated, especially in certain areas and certain sectors, right? Especially with food, with shelter, with housing, uh, essential items, certain commodities, especially when you still have a war going on between Russia and Ukraine and supply constraints still happening and the borders um, with, with China. Uh, that's also another issue, right? So a lot of backlog there. So if that continues to still be an issue, there might be an ease, don't get me wrong, there might be an ease that caused prices to come down. But will we see prices or inflation come back to that 2% target in the next year or so, especially next year, heading into 2023? My take is we'll probably see prices come down, but unless the Fed raises rates to 5%, or 6% or start increasing the rate very aggressively this year and next year, I believe that inflation will still continue to be elevated and still be elevated above the 2% target and the goal that they have, which means that, okay, if we come down, let's say hypothetically, we come down to 6% or 5%, you start printing money again, it elevates inflation again, creates worries in the markets. What do you do? You might have to increase interest rates again, tighten demand again, or maybe solve the issue with more supply. If you can get more supply in the market, then that could bring inflation down. But if, if supply doesn't solve on its own, and you put money back into the system, and then you get the same bullwhip effect again, where, okay, inventories at our highs, people are not buying, you stimulate the economy, you cut rates, and then all of a sudden, those retailers and manufacturers who are not ordering anything because they had high levels of inventory start to realize consumers came back and started buying things because now they've got more money from the stimulus or um, um, or from, from the rate cuts and, and et cetera. Right? So that starts to stimulate the economy again. Then again, the retailers might say, okay, we need to order more inventory again, which um, which you might see again a backlog of, of supply if there is one, which might cause prices to and CPI to eventually increase again, followed by the manufacturers, uh, retailers ordering more from the manufacturers, the manufacturers ordering more from the suppliers, and then again, if they raise rates and they slow down the demand like they're doing today, uh, again, then you'll have high levels of inventory, which then eventually might bring the second push down of inflation back to that 2% level. Could that be a scenario? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, right? I'm not a god. I'm not a guru. I'm not a genie. But, you know, this is one possibility with the bullwhip effect that you could see probably in the coming months inflation to come down lower and then if if you know we do start stimulating again won't that bring inflation back higher again and i do believe so it will keep it elevated and we might be solving or trying to fight this inflation issue for the next one two three years until we figure out the supply issues and we figure out also the demand side and trying to level the playing field so that prices can reach back to that 2%, right? And maybe that this might be that paradigm shift where we might be living with high inflation for some time until we can level off the supply and demand curve, right? And um, the other thing is that uh, with higher, um, higher interest rates, right, eventually that should bring prices down lower, um, but then when you get into a recession, that will also drop prices down lower as well. But then again, when you pump and pump and pump more money, um, that might have the reverse effect. And then you might see that full bullwhip cycle over and over again until hopefully we get back to that 2%. So I don't know, let me know what you guys think where uh, all of this might head in terms of inflation and CPI, but gen but definitely this is a very interesting concept with the bullwhip effect where you do see, um, you know, uh, Michael Burry talk about it and you can probably see in, in what we're seeing today with, with retailers like Target and with retailers like Walmart, you do see that, okay, um, the effects of it, right? Ordering a lot of this inventory, pushing it out in, into the markets, that should eventually bring prices down, maybe temporarily, and then we increase again, 
and then it's just going to be a back and forth. And it, it kind of reminds me of, you know, if you look back at the charts of 1980s, right, you had the same scenario, right? The markets went up, they raised rates, then uh, markets came off, they cut rates, then they raised rates again, 1991, 1981, 1982. Again, you had the market crash again, come off again, and then, you know, they raised rates aggressively, then eventually cut down all for fighting against inflation. Could we see the same things that, that we saw back in 1980 play out here in 2022, 2023, 2024? Very possible, but um, let's see, right? Anything's game. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below, and I will see you guys later. Good luck. Bye.